Hello and welcome to Google Cloud On Air. These are the live webinars from Google Cloud. Today we are hosting webinars, webinars every Tuesday. My name is Elias Pinto and, I, and with me I have... I'm Sarah Robinson. Uh, we're based out of New York and today we will be talking about AutoML Vision. To let you know, we, you can ask questions anytime on the platform and we have Googlers on standby to answer them. So let's get started. So here is Sarah. Thanks, Elias. So today we're going to talk about AutoML Vision, making custom image analysis possible for every business. Before we get into that, let's talk about what machine learning is. So at a high level, machine learning involves teaching computers to recognize patterns in the same way that our brains do. Over time, as machine learning models are given more examples and experience, they're able to improve and generalize on an input that they haven't seen before. So does anybody remember how they learned their first language? Your parents probably didn't give you a dictionary and a bunch of grammar books to memorize. That'd be kind of weird. Instead, you learned over time by being exposed to many different examples. So let's say you were having pasta for dinner. You saw it on your plate. You heard your parents identify it. Maybe you identified it incorrectly a few times and were corrected. Over time, this repetition strengthens certain pathways in your brain. And this is roughly how machine learning works, too. So at a high level, Machine learning is loosely based on how the human brain learns. Um, instead of biological neurons, we have mathematical neurons that mimic these neurons in our brain. With machine learning, we can solve problems without exactly knowing what the solution might be. And finally, machine learning enables systems that improve over time as they're given more and more data. So before I start solving a machine learning problem and picking the tool I'm going to use, I like to think about the type of ML problem that I'm solving. And uh, on Google Cloud Platform, we have a spectrum of machine learning offerings. So on the left-hand side, we have products that are targeted more towards application developers. If you're new to machine learning and don't have any machine learning experience, we offer five pre-trained APIs. These give you access to pre-trained machine learning models. All you need to do to access them is make one REST API request. On the right side of the spectrum, we have products that are targeted more towards data scientists and those with a little bit more machine learning experience. And for this, we have TensorFlow for building your own machine learning models and ML Engine as our managed platform for TensorFlow. So going a little bit deeper into this, if you've got a common classification task that someone else has solved before, you don't need to start from scratch. You don't need to build a model from scratch trained only on your own data. You can utilize existing pre-trained models that are out there. But if you've got a problem that's very specific to the type of data that you're dealing with at your company, it's probably going to be a more custom task that you'll need a more customized solution for. So let's take image classification as an example. Let's say you want to identify that there's a cat in this image. Now you've probably heard this example before. This has been done many times before. There's lots of models that exist out there that have been trained on hundreds of thousands of images that can tell you if there's a cat in an image or not. So there's no need to start from scratch, although you can if you'd like. Um, but fastest to utilize a pre-trained model that's already out there to help you with this. But let's say, for example, that this is your cat. Its name is Chloe, and you want to identify Chloe apart from other cats in your, ima in your image data set. So this is a more custom task. You're going to need to train a model on your own data uh, using labeled data so that it can identify Chloe apart from other cats and animals in your image library. So let's start with the machine learning APIs. We offer five different APIs that give you access to a pre-trained model to accomplish common machine learning tasks. So you don't really need to know anything about how these models work under the hood to get started. You just pass it your image data for the Vision API, for example, you get back a classification. The Video API does what the Vision API does for images, but for videos, lets you analyze videos. Uh, the Speech API lets you perform uh, speech-to-text transcription. With the Natural Language API, we can further analyze that text. And with the Translation API, we can translate text into over 100 different languages. So these are our pre-trained APIs targeted towards application developers who want to integrate machine learning into their applications. On the other side of the spectrum, uh, we have tools to help you build and train your models from scratch. So from the beginning, the Google Brain team wanted everyone in the industry to be able to benefit from all of the machine learning product projects that they were working on. So they made TensorFlow an open source project on GitHub. And the uptake has been phenomenal. TensorFlow is the most popular machine learning project on GitHub. Last time I checked, I think it had over 90,000 GitHub stars. It also just crossed over a million downloads. It's being used all over the world. And because TensorFlow is open source, 
you can train and serve your TensorFlow models anywhere. Because we're focused on Google Cloud Platform today, I'm going to talk about our managed platform for TensorFlow. This is called Cloud Machine Learning Engine. And it lets you take advantage of distributed training. You can distribute your training job across machines using GPUs or TPUs to accelerate your machine learning workloads. Once your model's trained, you can then choose to deploy it to machine learning engine for serving. So let's say your ML model becomes a huge hit. You're getting thousands and thousands of prediction requests every second. You're going to need a scalable way to handle all of those requests. And you can use machine learning engine to serve your model. The great thing about ML engine is there's no lock-in. You can choose to train your model on ML Engine and then download it, export it, and serve it somewhere else. Um, optionally, you can train the model wherever you'd like and decide you want to serve it on Machine Learning Engine. Another thing I like to think about when I'm diving into a machine learning problem is the resources that I'm going to need to solve that problem. I've listed just four here. There's probably others that I haven't thought of. Um, but let's go over what these are. So first is training data. How much training data are you going to need? Um, to get an accurate model that's going to get an accurate prediction on your data. How much model code are you going to write? Um, how much training and serving infrastructure are you going to have to provision? And then finally, overall, how much time is this whole process going to take you? Um, so let's look at how this applies to the products that I've talked about so far. So if we look at machine learning as an API, the great thing about these APIs is that you don't need any training data to use them. The model has already been trained. They're pre-trained models. So if I wanted to, I could just generate a prediction on a single image. I pass that image to the API, I get a prediction back, but it didn't require any of my own training data. I also don't need to write any of the model code. Again, that's all handled for you by the API. Um, and the API is available on Google Cloud Platform, so I don't need to worry about training or serving infrastructure. All it's going to take is a little bit of time to write my request to the API and figure out how I want to parse the response that I get back. You can get up and running with these APIs in probably less than a day. I'm going to talk about two approaches to building a custom model. The first is transfer learning, which lets you take advantage of a model that's already been trained to do a similar task to what you'd like to do. So let's say you want to identify where certain objects are in an image. There's lots of models that have been trained to do this, so you can utilize the weights of these trained models and then just modify the last couple layers based on your own training data. So with this, you will need some of your own training data because the output is going to be, the predictions are going to be specific to your data set. You will need to write some of the model code, and you may need to think about um, provisioning training or serving infrastructure, or you may choose to use a managed service for this. And this will obviously take a little bit more time than the pre-trained APIs. And then finally, if you've got a model built entirely from scratch, trained only on your data, you're going to need a lot of training data for this to work successfully. You're also going to need to write a lot of the model code yourself. Um, think about where you're going to run your training and how you're going to serve your model in production. And obviously, this one will take even more time than with transfer learning. So focusing uh, specifically on image analysis, let's take a look at the existing tools for image analysis on Google Cloud Platform. For that, we have the Cloud Vision API, which lets you perform image analysis with a single REST API request. These are all of the features that the Vision API, Vision API provides. So at its core, the Vision API offers label detection, which will tell you what is this a picture of? So for this image, it might return elephant, animal, et cetera. Then we have web detection, which goes a step further. And it will look across the internet for similar images. And then based on the content of those pages, it will provide additional details on what's in your image. Then we have OCR, or optical character recognition. OCR is able to extract text from images. So if any of you have ever used the Google Translate app before, and taken a picture of a sign and then seen the translation in real time, you can use the Vision API's OCR method to implement similar functionality into your own applications. Logo detection will identify common logos in an image. Uh, landmark detection will find landmarks in an image. Um, crop hints can help you crop your photo um, to focus on specific subjects in the image. And then finally, we have explicit content detection. Um, this is pretty self-explanatory. It will tell you, is your image appropriate or not? This one is pretty useful across the board for any, any site or app that has user-generated content. Instead of having someone manually review all of those images that come in, you can send it to the Vision API, and then maybe you only need to review a subset of those images. As I mentioned, the Vision API is a REST API, so you can call it in any language you'd like. Uh, the example code I have here is in Node.js, 
And on Google Cloud Platform, we have a number of client libraries in your favorite language that make it easy to call um, all of these APIs. So I'm using the Google Cloud node module for the Vision API. Here I tell it the types of detection I want to run. I call detect on that vision object, passing it. I can either pass it a local image URL, um, or I can pass it the URL of a file stored in Google Cloud Storage. Um, I can also just pass it the raw image content, Base64 encoded. So I pass it that image, um, the types of detection I want to run, and then I get a response back with the detections, and I can analyze that response however I'd like to use that data in my application. So I don't like to get too far into a presentation without showing a live demo. So I'm going to bring Elias on here to show us uh, a demo of Vision API. Thank you, Sarah. So here we have a chance to actually see how powerful the, the Cloud Vision API really is. And, and to build on what Sarah just said, it's really, uh, it gives the ability to understand what's in an image. It's, and Google is very uniquely um, positioned to be uh, to provide you with powerful machine learning models. And let me show you how easy it is. Uh, this is a publicly available uh, demo that you can do. And we're going to go and actually pull up some images here. So Sarah was kind enough to share some of her uh, recent uh, uh, holiday pictures. And we pulled up a picture she took in Poland. And right away, what you see is that the image, um, the, the machine learning model immediately recognized that this was taken in Krakow, or if you're Polish, it's, I think you pronounce it Krakow. And, and it not only recognizes that landmark, but it's able to uh, find out that it's also the main market square. And because of Google Maps, we're able to pull exactly the, uh, the lat long of where that picture was taken. Let's look a little bit more into the other um, labels that we have, the other entities that we recognize. So we recognize the face. See, here we see uh, the human face is, is picked out, but also please note the exact location of things like eyes, uh, nose, and, and mouth is correctly identified. We're able to also uh, determine uh, uh, sentiment analysis. So uh, Sarah here looks very joyful and even surprised at that picture. Uh, and, and as you can see there, very likely uh, those are the emotions she is displaying on that um, picture. It must have been a fun holiday. Um, so we can qu quickly see there is a very long list of, uh, of labels that we automatically uh, assign to uh, that picture. And um, we're able to see that it under the, uh, the web uh, uh, entities, we're, ab we're able to use the knowledge of the web about that picture and actually pull it and, and does an image search and, and compares that with the information available on the web. Uh, I'll, I'll briefly mention here that we also have safe search. We can very quickly identify that, yes, this is just a plain holiday uh, picture, and it's safe to show at any age. Last thing I want to show is the JSON output. It's a very long output, but I'll just highlight some of the um, types and positions of, of the different labels. So you see the left eye, the right eye, and so on and so forth. For each one of the labels that it identified, it pulls, uh, it gives you exactly where it is located on the image. Let's pull up another image. And this one is a little busier. Uh, Sarah, again, was uh, very lucky to have gone to Hamilton, the show, very recently, so she shared a picture. As you can see, this is a much busier picture. There's a lot more going on, a lot more different labels uh, and, 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 and other, um, other elements in this picture. So under faces, right away, we picked her face here, again, with a sentiment analysis. Uh, we want to show, now, here's the interesting bit. Um, we can show uh, things like, uh, on the web, it recognized correctly this was the Richard, uh, Richard Rogers Theater. And under text, I don't know if you noticed, but the word playbill is actually in the bottom there. This highlights the intelligence around OCR that we have. Even if there's multiple words in the picture, we're able to extract that to you. If it's a piece of text under the document, we say it's a menu or a, a form or, uh, or a, a resume. We're able to pick different uh, blocks of text and display them under pages and blocks. So um, this, these are some of the things that we wanted to highlight. The good thing is that this is uh, publicly available under cloud.google.com slash vision. And you may test this on your own um, today. A quick reminder, if I may, if you want to ask questions, we ask you that you uh, put those questions throughout our presentation so we're able to uh, bubble them up towards the end of our session. Back to Sarah. Thank you, Elias. Great demo. 
So back to the slides. I want to revisit the ML spectrum that I covered in the beginning. So remember that on the left-hand side, we have products targeted towards app developers, machine learning APIs. So these are pre-trained APIs. You can't customize them at all, but they're very easy to get up and running with. On the other side of the spectrum, we have products targeted towards data scientists and machine learning practitioners. And these allow you a lot more flexibility in building a custom model trained on your own data set. So this is what the spectrum looked like until just a couple of months ago. So I'm super excited uh, about this new, pro new product that we announced in January called AutoML. The first product under AutoML is AutoML Vision. It's currently in alpha, so you need to be whitelisted to use it. But what AutoML does is you can see it clearly fills a gap in the spectrum. What it does is AutoML Vision lets you customize the Vision API um, to your own data set. So let's say the Vision API works pretty well for you. Um, but you've got some very specific images that you wouldn't expect it to recognize what they are, um, but you want to generate labels based on your company's very specific data set. Now you can do that with AutoML. So this is what AutoML Vision provides. It's essentially a UI that helps you with every step of building your model, from importing the data, uh, labeling it, training a model, evaluating how well it performed, um, and then finally making predictions on that model using data that it hasn't seen before. So the best way to show you AutoML Vision is to jump right into a demo. Um, so for this demo, let's say that I am a meteorologist. Maybe I work at a weather company. And I want to predict weather trends and flight plans from images of clouds. So this begs the question, can we use the cloud to analyze clouds? The answer, as you probably guessed, is yes. So as I was preparing this demo, um, I didn't know much about actual clouds before, so I learned a lot. And I learned that there are many different types of clouds, as you can see here. And they all indicate different kinds of weather patterns. So my first thought was to try this out with the Vision API. I took a bunch of these different cloud images and sent them to the Vision API to see what I got back. Now for us, it's easy to see as humans that these are completely different types of clouds. But the Vision API was trained on a huge variety of labels. Um, to recognize high-level things. So it knows that there are clouds in these images. Um, but even though these images are very different types of clouds, we get similar labels back from the Vision API. So this is where AutoML Vision comes to the rescue. So let's see a demo of AutoML Vision. Go back to the demo. And what we have here is the UI for AutoML Vision. So as you can see, it takes us through each step of building our model from importing data, label, train, evaluate, and predict. So the first step here is to import our data. And there's a couple ways to do this. We can put all of our images in Google Cloud Storage. And then we need to create a CSV, where the first column will be the URL of that image. The second column will be the label associated with that image. Now, we can also build models that have multiple labels for images for one image. Then you just add extra columns to the CSV for that particular image. So in this case, I've already uploaded all of my data and trained the model. So let's see what happens here in the labeling step. So here is where I can review my image labels. Um, so I can see what I've assigned each image. This data set I've already labeled. So this, for example, is a cumulus cloud. We've got a cirrus cloud here. Let's say I label this one incorrectly. I can click on it and switch out the label here. Um, but let's say, for example, that I did not have time to label my data set, or I had a giant data set, and there was no way I'd be able to label it all. AutoML Vision provides an in-house human labeling service. So the way this works is you provide a set of instructions and some exemplar images for each label to these human labelers. And in just a couple of days, you'll get back a labeled image data set. For this case, I already had a labeled data set. And just to look at a breakdown of how many images of each type of cloud I have. Here I'm looking at five different types of clouds. And we can see how many, I, how many images I have for each label. You only need 10 images per label to start training a model. Um, but AutoML recommends at least 100 for high quality predictions. And you'll obviously need more depending on what you're trying to predict. So the next step is training your model. And the great thing about AutoML is that you don't need to write any of the model code. That's handled by AutoML for you automatically. All we need to do is literally just press this train button. And we can choose whether we want to train a base model or a more complex advanced model. I'll get into that a bit later on. So once I've trained my model, I'll get an email when it completes. 
And my next step is to go in here and see how my model performed. And there's a bunch of different machine learning metrics here. Um, what I want to focus on is what's called a confusion matrix. If it looks confusing, it's called a confusion matrix. But it's actually not that confusing. Let's take a look. So in ideal confusion matrix, we want to see a strong diagonal down the top left, which is what we get here. What this is telling us is when we uploaded our images to AutoML, it took a portion of them to train the model, but then it set aside um, a small percentage of those images to see how the model did on data that it didn't see during training. So this is how the model performed on that smaller test set of images. So what this is telling us is that for all of my images that were actually Alto Cumulus clouds, uh, my model predicted 76% of those correctly. And we can see the percentages we get all down here. Um, now for this model, I actually trained both the base and the advanced version. And AutoML has a great way to compare different versions of your model. So let's say, even if you just train a bunch of versions of the base model, let's say you train it once with 500 images, then you add 500 more images and retrain your model and you want to see how it performs. So I can compare them here. And now I can see how it did um, on the base compared to the advanced model. And this looks pretty good. It looks like um, this, all of these went up significantly when I went from the base to the advanced model. But hey, wait, this one actually went down 12%. And wouldn't you expect the advanced model to perform better across the board? Well, what this actually points out is that there may be some problems with my training data. So if we look at um, where it got confused, it looks like it was labeling a lot of my Alto Stratus images as cumulus clouds. And I can actually click on this, and I can see the images that my model was confused on. So it turns out that these images actually are a little confusing, and they may have been labeled incorrectly. Um, and the advanced model was able to identify these shortcomings in my training data for me. Um, so now I can go in, next time I update my model, I can make sure to add better images of Alto Cumulus clouds. So the next step, and the most fun in my opinion, is generating predictions on our train model. And there's a couple of different ways to do this. Um, one is I can use the web UI. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I can upload an image here, and I can see what AutoML vision is going to predict. So this was indeed a picture of a cirrus cloud, and this is pretty awesome. AutoML is, our model is 99% confident that this is a cirrus cloud. So we can use the UI to generate predictions. This is a good, just quick and easy way to check your model, see how it's performing right after it's been trained. Uh, but chances are you actually want to build an application that's going to query your trained model. And there's a couple different ways to do this. Um, I want to highlight one in particular, which is the Vision API. So you saw briefly in the past slides um, what a request to the Vision API looks like. And what I want you to focus on here is that the request really doesn't look that much different um, with AutoML. So the only things we need to add to our request is this custom label detection parameter. And then once we train our model, we get access to this ID for our trained model. And so we need to add that to our request. Only I have access to this model version or whoever else I share this project with. So let's say that I'm using the Vision API. Let's say I had some weather app. And first, I wanted my app only to detect, is there a cloud in this image? I was using the Vision API. But then I decided, you know what, that wasn't actually good enough. I need to detect the types of clouds that I'm seeing in these images. I don't really need to change much about how my app is architected in order for that to work. I just need to switch out um, or add this custom label detection parameter along with the model that I've just trained. So that's how we generate predictions on our model. Um, and to show you how easy it is to build an app that uses our trained model, um, I've built a super simple web app here where I can upload a photo of a cloud. And we'll use this one. And it's going to call my model. And it's going to tell me a little bit more about that cloud. Um, so this is a cumulonimbus cloud. And if you see this type of cloud while you're on a plane, probably not the best sign. Might be some turbulence. Um, so this, this is just a simple web app that queries that model using the Vision API, which I just showed you. And it gives us a little bit more data on what these types of clouds actually mean. So that is uh, AutoML Vision. I'm going to go back to the slides. And I wanted to highlight some companies that are using AutoML Vision in production. Uh, the first is Disney. Disney built a model trained to identify specific Disney characters product categories, and dominant colors that were specific to the images that they have in their data set. And they've integrated this model into Disney's search engine. And it's helping their users get more relevant results 
and find their products faster. Urban Outfitters is a clothing company and they have a similar use case to Disney. They train a model to recognize specific types of clothing patterns and neckline styles and they're using that to build a comprehensive set of product attributes. So through this, they're able to improve product recommendations, search results, and product filters. The last example is the Zoological Society of London. Um, the Zoological Society of London has cameras deployed all over in the wild um, to identify different types of wildlife in their images. And rather than having someone manually review all of the footage that they're seeing, um, they built an AutoML model to identify all the different types of wildlife that they're seeing in those images. So I definitely encourage you to go learn more about AutoML Vision. Um, you can go to cloud.google.com slash AutoML, and there you can fill out a form to sign up for the alpha. We're really interested to hear what types of use cases you have for AutoML. Um, there's more details in the blog post where we announced AutoML. There's also an intro video. Um, a podcast that goes into a little bit more detail about how this works under the hood. Um, and then if you want to try out the Vision API, if you want to use the demo that Elias showed earlier, um, you can head over to cloud.google.com slash vision to try that out with your own images. I definitely recommend doing that. Um, let's say you want to see if the Vision API is right for your app, um, but you don't want to write any code yet. So you can just upload your images there, see the JSON response you'll get back, um, and see if the Vision API is going to be a good fit for your application. Uh, so thank you. And I'm going to bring Elias back up here. So we're going to be going into Q&A here in just a moment. So we'll be back in a minute. Thank you. Welcome back, everybody. Hopefully, you've been uh, busy putting some questions there. And uh, we've bubbled up a couple of the questions here to get us started. So um, do you want to take the first one here? I'll, I'll read it first. So how do I sign up for AutoML? That is a great question. Um, to sign up for AutoML, go to cloud.google.com slash AutoML. And there you'll see a link to fill out a form. And this is where we're collecting details about um, the use case that you want to use AutoML for. So 
We'll review that, um, and then you should hear back within a couple of weeks or so. Um, okay. Let's see the next question. So do you want to take this one? Sure. Um, what industries do you see using AutoML? The cool thing is that we are democratizing the technology. So really, any business that has uh, that deals with uh, uh, image data and which arguably is the vast majority, whether it is actual uh, uh, um, um, image data that has, and specifically I'm talking about auto ML vision here, if you have to, as part of your business, identify things, if you want to, uh, uh, and we talked about Disney, about identifying their, their characters and that intellectual property uh, across a very large uh, data set, we're able to uh, really apply the mature uh, machine learning models here to a lot of verticals like uh, manufacturing, retail, uh, uh, any sort of uh, customer facing uh, uh, applications. There are, there are way too many industries here to, to I don't want to limit ourselves because uh, even if you're just processing um, um, resumes or, or, or credit card, I'm not credit cards, uh, or business cards, we can do a lot to uh, expedite what your business does. Uh, uh, lower the costs of entry because again it's a, it's an API you don't have to build another Google data center we've done it and so you're able to just leverage that and 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 just pay for what you use okay um, I'll take the uh, let me read the next one so how how do I know whether I should use auto ML or build an image classification ma model from scratch what is that one yeah that's a good question um, so what AutoML excels at is image classification. So you give it a lot of image, labeled images, it's able to output a label or a tag for that image. Um, but let's say you want to do something a little bit more complex, like you want to identify um, bounding boxes in your image. So you want to say, um, this is a specific product um, that our company builds, and we want to identify where, we, where we're seeing it in an image um, with a bounding box. You would need to build a custom image classification model with TensorFlow or Cloud Machine Learning Engine to do that. Or let's say you wanted to identify um, regions in an image. That's called masking. So identify, labeling um, specific regions in whatever types of images you're labeling. That's another use case for um, a custom image classification model. Um, but if you, if you would like to do image tagging, so output some labels based on an image, um, AutoML is great across the board. And the really cool thing is it doesn't require you to have to write any of that model code yourself. Awesome. Um, let's see. Let me read you the last one, the next one here. Um, how long does training a model really take? And are there any best practices to consider in order to speed up this process or improve accuracy? Sounds like somebody who's really, uh, really wants to train their model. Yeah, um, that's a good question. I can take that one. Go on. um, so how long does training a model take? For the base model, um, I found it takes about an hour, maybe a little bit less. Um, the advanced model for my cloud data set, which had about 1,500 images, um, took just about two to, two to three hours to train. Um, although, as you saw in the UI, the advanced model, depending on how many images you have, um, can take up to four hours to train because this is a much more complex type of model. Um, so it really depends on how many images are in your data set. Um, and the complexity of and the variety of those images. Um, some tips to improve accuracy. Um, as I showed briefly, looking at the Evaluate tab in the AutoML UI is super useful. Um, I showed the confusion matrix. There are a couple other metrics there. Um, but what I love about that confusion matrix in the UI is that you can actually click and see um, what's being labeled correctly, what's being labeled incorrectly. So I think that's the best way to improve accuracy on your model, because you want to remember that your model is only going to be as good as the quality of training data that you give it. Um, so that, that Evaluate tab can help you identify problems with your training data. So then you can go back, look at the matrix, and see, OK, maybe a lot of my data was mislabeled, or maybe there just wasn't enough of this particular label category in my data set. And you can go back and improve it. Um, so once, here, you read the next one. Yeah, let's take a look at the next it. one. Um, once a model is built, say, for identifying a particular brand of toy, who owns that model, mm. Google or the customer who built it? This is a really important question to get answered. Um, you own your data. That's an important point. I'll say it again. You own your data. Google does not own the model. We don't, uh, very important to mention that. We don't use, we do not use your data to retrain our models. Uh, for example, uh, Sarah showed the, the cloud classification. 
that cloud training and the data and, and, and the pictures themselves remain uh, uh, under Sarah's ownership. And we, there, there, there's a very hard um, uh, a break here that we don't use that data or information to train anything outside of it. So um, uh, folks that are worried about intellectual property or should I be, uh, you know, how should I train my model? Should I use my, my, my special sauce with, uh, with my special pictures? You feel that there is no danger of that getting out and we don't use that data to retrain anything else outside uh, of your own models. Okay, um, I'll read the next one. Um, we're on the last one on this slide. So, so I want to classify on a type of image or a brand which isn't covered by the Vision API. Hmm. What can I use to extend the classification that is already available through AutoML slash Vision API? I think you touched on that a little bit. Maybe yeah. you want to go yeah. back to it a little bit. I touched on that a little bit earlier, but I'll go back into it. So I mentioned with the cloud example, so let's say that I just want to know, is there a cloud in my image? Vision API is great for that, but then I wanted to go one step further and say, okay, what types of clouds are these? Maybe I'm using it to build a weather analysis application. Then I can train a custom model using AutoML. Um, another example is, let's say you've got um, a product that's, that's a new product part of your, that your company has just launched, and you want to identify all of the images that contain a picture of that product. Um, since it's new, the Vision API Will not, be, will not know what that specific product is, since that's specific to your company. So then you can build an AutoML model to train it to recognize all of the images that contain that. You could do the same with um, a brand or logo of a new product that you're launching. You can build a, a custom model that's able to identify all of the images that contain that brand in it. Awesome. Um, I think we, um, these are all the questions that we have bubbled up here. Um, so I think we're going to move towards our closing then, if we may. So we're, uh, we have more content coming down uh, following this session. So we invite you to stay tuned. Um, the next session is around G, G Suite security. And they're going to be looking at the enterprise mobility management, the, and also the enterprise security protection, and much more. So thank you again for uh, spending the last couple of minutes here with us. We encourage you to go to cloud.google.com to go deep and wide on some of the subjects that we covered here today. And uh, thanks for uh, spending some time with us. Take care. Thank you.